Thank you everybody for coming. Bill and I really appreciate it. I'd love to see so many good looking people out there. Um, I've kind of told everybody when they're going to be queued up. Bill's probably going to be more the master of ceremonies, but I'm starting it out. First of all, I want to show this one little piece real fast. Isn't this the cutest little thing? You know how they made these? Now somebody heard my story yesterday. They would get the big, big one, the regular size one, they stick it in a microwave and they zap it and it shrinks. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so, with that, I'm going to let Bill take it over. That's my best joke, you know. <laughs> uh, thank you for that explanation of what it means to be a tall tale. <laughs> um, uh, good to see everybody here. Hope everybody uh, during the course of the presentation can hear. Uh, I can turn the volume up if I need to. and. Uh, Hopefully it'll be fine. Um, we're going to start off with a, a, a tall tale that, uh, well, it could be true, I guess, that uh, Ken and I did uh, several years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, it, it, we were trying to figure out how we could, you know, get some carnival glass without paying any money. Yeah. So uh, we uh, we came up with an idea, and uh, this little video kind of kind of shows you what, 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 what we did. So if, uh, Kenda, you want to get those lights yes, back there? Yes, I will. There? And this is an oldie but a goodie. Some of you might have seen it. Oh, the shark, babe, has such teeth, dear. And it shows them pearly white. Just a jackknife has old Maggie Heath. Baby. And it keeps it uh, out of sight You know when that shark bite With his teeth, baby Scarlet billows start to spread Fancy gloves, though, where's old Maggie Heath, baby So there's never, never a trace of red now on the sidewalk, uh, ooh, Sunday morning, uh, lies a body just oozing life. Eek! And someone sneaking round the corner. Could that someone be Mac the Knife? Uh, there's a tugboat uh, 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 down by the river, don't you know? Where a cement bag is just drooping on down Oh, that cement is just, it's there for the weight to dare Five will get you ten old Mackies back in town Now you hear about Louis Miller, he disappeared, babe After drawing out all his hard-earned cash and now Maggie Heath spins just like a sailor. Could it be our boys done something rash? Ah, Jenny Diver, ho, ho, yes, Sugi Tawdry. Ooh, Miss Lottie Linya and old Lucy Brown. Not that Maggie back in town. I said, Jenny Diver, whoa, Suki Tawdry, look out to Miss Lottie Lynn, yeah, and old Lucy Brown. Yes, that line falls on the right, babe. Not that Maggie. Well, now it's your 
turn to decide whether that was true or false. Um, I, needless to say, I'm sure everybody thought that was true. Uh, for all the goofy things I do, you never know. Uh, <laughs> video proof, right? Yeah, yeah. You're right. I think there was a radio station or television station out there watching me. But, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a whole bunch of uh, pieces up here. And we're going to have the people who brought them tell their tales, and you're going to decide whether they're true or false. So after each person does their thing, we're going to have you raise your hand. True? False? But I'm going to give the option of the person who's uh, uh, giving you the story. I'm going to give them the option. They can either say, yes, it was true, or yes, it was false, or they're going to keep you hanging. <laughs> Basically, so a, that's their story, and they're sticking to it. That's their story, and they're sticking to it. And it's up to you. Maybe talk about it tonight, over dinner, or whatever. And, uh, what do you think? Was it true, or was it false? So we're going to start out with... Uh, uh, slide here showing uh, the first picture and it says Bill Jeske so obviously it's got to be mine. They say that uh, there's, there's no friends in an auction and uh, but sometimes it's not only auctions that uh, uh, you, you end up uh, battling against one of your friends. Uh, Ken and I and Galen and Kathy Johnson went to a flea market last year and it was kind of rainy out and there weren't a lot of people there and uh, the girls went off in one direction and Galen and I went off in another direction. And we were going down a couple aisles of, uh, of uh, vendors and I, I had to go to the bathroom, as I normally have to do. And Galen went on ahead of me. Once I was finished with the bathroom, I started following the trail that he would have taken. And usually Galen's pretty good about seeing everything. You know, if, if there's anything out there, he spots it right away. Uh, but as I was following his, his trail where he was headed to, I, I caught in my eye a, 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 a kind of a blue iridescent type piece on a table of a vendor that didn't have any other glass. So I went over there and I looked at it and I, it, was a, it was a stretch piece of blue and it was, it was pretty, but sitting right next to it, it turned out to be this piece here. And uh, this is a uh, lime green opalescent um, rose show plate. Mm -hmm. uh, bowl, better, I'm sorry. Plate, no it's plate. plate. It's a plate, mm -hmm. okay. It's a plate. Little do I know. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I picked it up, looked at it, and it had $100 firm on it, and, and I, I'm not the real expert in the family. I know my wife is, and Galen and Kathy are pretty well, well versed in carnival glass. So I saw Ken and Kathy coming back over, and I waved them over. and. Uh, I showed it to Kathy and Ken, and Kathy had it in her hands, and she says, one of us are going home with this plate today. And I said, oh, good. You know, thinking, well, I found it. Okay. So uh, Kathy calls on, on Galen on the phone, and he find, winds his way back. He finds us uh, at this one vendor's table, and he looks at it, and he sees $100 firm. And uh, he looks at Kathy, and he pulls out his wallet, and he starts taking out money. And I'm thinking, hey, I found this piece. <laughs> so he's ready to give her money. I, and I looked at the, the vendor and I said, well, I'll give you 110. <laughs> and Galen looked at me and said, well, I'll give you 120. <laughs> and I said, well, 130. And he said, 140. Well, this went on for a while. And uh, he finally gave up realizing, yes, I did, I did find the piece. And uh, so uh, we went home with it. But and, not for a uh, hundred. <laughs> but not for a hundred. No, so. so now I guess uh, the choice is up to you. Uh, is that a true tale, or is it a false tale? How many people think it's true? Part of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that's. If it's only part of it, then you must think it's false. Then, right? How many people think it's false? Okay, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> no, you're you're right. It's partially true, partially false, but. Uh, uh, it, it was a nice piece, and, and uh, we were happy to have gotten it that day. So we'll go on to the next person here, right? Uh, yep. So you're okay. not going to tell us what the false part was? Well, the, what the false part was? Galen and I going back and forth. You to know, bid it up. So you got yeah. it for 100? Did you get it for 100? Actually, well, that, actually it was 130. 130, something like that. Is what we actually uh, 100 did. was a nice number. But I didn't want to say 130. There is a little, little up, so. ding on the back. But yeah, there is a little, a little ding, ding on the back. So. For, for Lime Opal? 
Yeah. And I'm Grimopo. Was this? this was in Sandwich, Illinois. Sandwich, Illinois. Wow. Okay, let's see what we got here. True or false? Okay, we got Don Rupel. Now, Don Rupel sent uh, a piece in, but he's not here. And But he did send his his tall tale. And if you give me a second here, I'll get it out. And, uh, okay, this is... Here it is. Okay. It says, my kind of glass fine. A few years ago when I was married, my wife and I set up an outdoor antique show in a small village a few miles from home. We had been doing this show twice a year for several years. I liked the show because it was close to home and I managed to find some good carnival glass there for my collections. After we had her booth set up, my wife was the dealer, I was mostly the help since I'm not a salesperson. I left to walk the show and see if there were any interesting pieces of carnival glass for me. About three quarters of the way through the show, I came upon a table with six pieces of carnival glass and an elderly gentleman sitting behind it. I picked up a bowl and while looking at it, we struck up a conversation. He told me that he came to help his son who was selling furniture and thought he would try to sell some glass because he had kill time until the end of the, and, and to leave, before they're gonna leave. I was inspecting the bowl for damage when I happened to glance uh, at the bowl sitting on the table next to where the bowl in my hands had sat. My heart skipped a beat when I saw the color of the glass and the feet. What's that? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I thought maybe you knew, knew the story, or maybe it was your bowl was sitting there or <laughs> something. Okay, where are we? Okay. I picked it up and uh, picked up the bowl and looked at it, trying to. Trying to look too, not trying to look too excited. Let's see, it's a peacock and grape, ice cream shape, spatula footed, and lime green oval. I didn't know what this bowl cost, as there were no prices on the glass, but he soon answered my thoughts. He spoke up and said that piece is $35. That really sent my mind spinning, and with, and with difficult control, I managed to say, I'll take it. I gave him $35, no haggling over the price, and rushed the two blocks where my wife was uh, when I showed it to her, her eyes opened wide and she said, oh my. I told her, oh my, oh my, oh my. I want to put a little expression into his wife's voice. Uh, <laughs> I, I told her what I paid for it and she couldn't believe it. But as we were looking at my find, my thoughts went back to the table and the other glass. The thought sprang into my mind, what color was the bowl that I was looking at at first? I quickly ran down the street to the table and saw the other bowl was still sitting there. I approached the table trying to look casual. Inside I was tingling. Picked up the bowl carefully and slow, slowly held it up to the sky. My stomach started doing flip-flops and my mind was spinning. I usually get that way after I drink. But, uh, and I barely heard the gentleman say, that, was one, uh, that one's a little bit more expensive, it's $40. I thought to myself, did he say $40? And then I hear him say, I almost bought a book on Millersburg glass, but it was too expensive. <laughs> my mind went back to the bowl in my hands. He is right, this is Millersburg, it's whirling leaves and it is blue. All, Millers Miller all Millersburg blue is rare. To this day, I don't know how I kept my voice clear and my hands from, from shaking when I told him, I guess I'll take this and paid him again, no haggling. When I returned to the booth and showed this bowl to my wife, she almost fell out of her chair and said, another one, two spectacular finds in one day and from the same dealer. I knew that the Whirling Leaves bowl was rare, but it didn't know, but, but didn't know just how rare until that night when I, dis when I checked it out with an expert on carnival glass. He told me that he knows only two blue Whirling Leaves bowls. A couple years later, I placed these bowls into a carnival walk glass auction and discovered just how good my finds were that day. The peacock and grape lime green opal bowl went for $365, it cost him only $35, and the whirling leaves bowl in the blue went for $4,400, and it only cost $40. Okay, these were the best two two finds out of the eight good pieces of carnival glass that I found in that show and village over, over three or four years. And sadly to say, the antique store, the antique show caused, uh, bleh. It's not and going on no more. <laughs> sadly to say, 
that antique show ceased to exist a couple years ago. And that's Don, from Don Rubo. So I guess we can say it's true or false, but since he's not here, I, we can't really tell if it was true or false. So I'll, we'll just have you raise your hands. How many people think it's true? Oh, uh, <laughs> false. Okay, we'll have to convey to him that, uh, that uh, most people thought it was true. So hopefully we're all right. Okay, okay, let's go on to the next one here. We'll see what we got. All right. Our next contestant is Virgil. Yay! <laughs> And Virgil, I, I got to say that I, I goofed up. There's a little black lines in there that they shouldn't be there. That's, that's not part of his piece. And here's the microphone for you. All right. Okay. Uh, I brought a, I guess, clear diamond's point base. And it's sitting there like that. It doesn't look like much. But feel free to pick it up and look at it with the light shining more on it. It's got really a subtle but really good iridescence on it. Uh, pinks and blues and some yellow. Uh, and the story behind this is uh, our daughter lived in San Diego, California, and she was getting ready to move back to Kansas. And so I flew out to help her drive back and so forth and so on. And we were at her apartment or her condo that she had purchased. And uh, waiting for the movers to come. So I got a newspaper and I, like I always do, went to the one ends. And lo and behold, here was an ad for Carnival Glass. So I got on the phone and I called and a lady answered, and I said, I'm calling about the carnival glass. It was a garage sale that they were holding. And she said, I asked if they had some, and how much, and she said, oh my, do we have carnival glass. So she gave me directions, and not having anything else to do, I drove out there, and uh, found a couple pieces in the garage and started visiting and they said, well, yeah, we've got a lot. And it was one of those situations where, and I don't call anybody old anymore, but there was a very ex experienced carnival glass, glass collector in the house and uh, a son running the garage sale. And the son, of course, wanting the mother, it's time to get rid of some of this stuff. Oh no, I can't get rid of it, da 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 da. So they took me in the house, and carnival glass all over the place, dust all over the place. Uh, I bought one piece, and this isn't it, where I had to get down on the hands and knees on the floor and look underneath a cabinet to find a, a picture and some glasses. So it, you know, it was quite the experience. And like I said, she did not want to sell, but we finally got things in motion and she had a Moradini price guide. I forget what year, but uh, basing everything on that price guide, which didn't make a lot of sense, but we all know that some is real high and some not, depending on how much iridescence and how old and so forth. And I looked around and she was willing to sell me a couple pieces. And I took them back to my daughter's place and when everything was time to go, I put them in her car and we came back to Kansas. Well, there was at least one piece out there that I wanted to <coughs> And so I convinced my wife that I needed to fly back out. And lo and behold, she had the money to let me do that and uh, gave me some more money to buy some glass once I got out there. So I did fly out, rented a car, went back out to this lady's house, and her son was there again. And of course, looking around, will you sell this, will you sell that? 
and I wound up buying about five pieces of glass. And this particular picture or vase, uh, like I said, for, to begin with, not really pretty when it's setting like that, but if you take it, look at it that way. And I got that piece plus about five or six more. And the piece I had really gone back out for, she would not sell. So, uh, some of her background, she told me she had taken the antique trader back in the day and that she had bought some glass that belonged to Marion Hartung and all that kind of stuff. And uh, she was uh, interesting enough, she was kind of a truck farmer, similar to the Brits. And she would, the money she made off of that small truck farm, she would spend on carnival glass. And uh, once again, she really didn't want to get rid of it, but the sons were trying to push her and da 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 da. And the reason I decided to do this today was, you know, last year I was disappointed that I didn't, and it's not a tremendous piece of glass, uh, but that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you, Virgil. First of all, I have to apologize for changing your, changing your lineage up there. Uh, my wife says I spelled your last name wrong. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> so you. You, you belong to another family I now. I before E. <laughs> before E, except true after or, C. True or false? How many think how true? Many, how many people think it's true? How many people think it's false? Do you want to let them know? That's a pretty good split. No, it's, it's all true. It's all true. Oh, good, good for the true people. Okay. Miss Barb. Barb and Don Chamberlain. Barb, I believe you're up here then. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Once, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, in the land of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, <laughs> we went to visit this lady because we heard that she had kind of a class, and we didn't go. We're not the type to go and say, do you have a carnival glass that you want to sell? But we went to visit to see her collection. We were really quite new. I can't remember how long ago it was, but we've been collecting almost 40 years now. But we got there and the lady messed at the door with her two Dobermans. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't blame her because my brother was with us and here's Don, you know how big Don is. And my brother's taller than him. And I can see why she might want her dogs there. Well, we got in there and the dogs raced around the house, up on the couch, down off the couch, up on the couch, down off the couch. And finally they settled down and we sat down and I was sitting right across from the fireplace and here sitting on the fireplace were two diamond point faces. I got up to go check on them and promptly one of the dogs went right here. <laughs> well, it, it stung, but it didn't do any damage. But we remembered the, this vase with its partner for years. And a few years ago, there was this lady who did tag sales. And she had all this carnival glass up for sale. And she e emailed and called us and she said, would you come down and help us price this? And we said, sure. So we went down with a notebook in hand and jotted down what she had. And we aren't some of these people like Reg Dunham who can keep everything up here. And so I looked things up on the internet and we gave her, the, the lady running the tag sale, a range of prices uh, on all the items. And we went down to, to the tag sale the next week or two, whatever it was, and got there early. Standing in front of us were two people. One was a carnival glass collector, one was a 
pottery collector, dealer, and then us. And then behind us came Jim C. <laughs> well, you get to a tag sale early to get your number. We were there two or three hours early. And we got our numbers and then Jim took us out to eat. And we got back to the tag sale and this one collector that was in front of us was still in front of us because he went out to break, breakfast too. And we got there and finally the time came for the doors to open and this first guy just kind of moved in and I went <laughs> right to this face. This was the only one of the two left. And then I went to the ice blue piece and a couple other pieces and dimes going somewhere else. Anyway, we ended up getting this. She appeared to have put mostly the highest price in the range, so we didn't get this cheap. That's my story. Okay, how many people think it was true? <laughs> oh, you got a lot of fans out there. False? Yeah, the truths win. Do you want to disclose whether it was true it's, or not? It's true. It's true. Good, good job. Good job. Well, I want to tell the people on my piece, sure. feel free to pick it up. Okay. Look at it that way. Okay, yeah. yeah uh, if anybody would like to pick up his piece, uh, that was this here. Piece to talk about. Oh, is it up there? Yeah. You may oh, okay. pick it's it up, up and look at it. Okay, okay, thank she's you. She's got a second piece. Oh, you got a second piece now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don refused to tell the tale. He could tell a tall tale. I could. Okay, there you, you go. Here's piece one? number two. This piece we just got last Saturday. We went to, we, we don't have too many places to shop right, right around us. There is a mall in the next town over but They have mostly toys. Toys. So we traveled for two hours to get to the nearest mall, and th this town has three shops. It used to have four shops, it only had three shops. And we went into the first one, looked around, nothing that we wanted. Went into the second one, looked around, nothing there. And usually the third shop. We don't go, well, we go to it, but there's nothing there but a lot of junk. And we get there, we, uh, I said, Don, I don't know if we need to go out there, but they have this cute cat called an Ollie. So I said, well, let's go visit Ollie. And we got there, and just right outside the door, there was Ollie waiting to be pet, just the nicest little cat. And Don was, after I pet Ollie, Don was petting Ollie, and then I spotted this right around the corner, uh, seven inch, vintage green plate. And I looked at the price, and the dealer was there, and he said, I can do better on it. And so we looked it over. And we decided to take it because it's it's got a nice for especially for Finn, a nice satiny iridescence on it. It does have a little imperfection, but we got it for fourteen dollars. There you go. Okay. Fourteen dollars. Wow, that's spectacular. Uh true? False? Well, yeah, mostly true. Is it true? It was true. All right. Good job. Good job. Thank you, Barb. And next up here is, is Mr. Carl Carl Eunice Booker. Nunez. Here you go, folks. Thank you. I'm going to preface mine with just a very little bit of uh, brag braggadocia. In March, we were greatly honored by the Texas Club with the Whitley Award. And, you know, when you do that, you get roasted. <laughs> Well, Tommy Whitley roasted this, and he told stories which were furnished to him by good friends of ours. Don't tell your friends stories, they come back to them, but the stories were true. And uh, Brian Pittman roasted this, and there was another one. 
well, and then all of a sudden, now we knew those people were going to roast us. Jim Seek was told about us. And I thought, what's Jim Seek going to say about us? Well, he was asked to tell people about our collecting. And he said, I don't know what to tell you about the bookers collecting except they're cheap. <laughs> I like to say we're frugal, but he was said they're cheap. But anyway, that's a little preface to, to the piece that we're going to show you. It's a Rosalind Compote and Amethyst. We are known for liking small items in carnival glass. We have a nice collection of small pieces. We like small compotes. We like Millersburg and we we went to a sale in central North Indiana. It was had a lot of carnival, it was well advertised. Lee Markley happened to be there, and a few other pieces of people we knew. And the sale went on and on, and I don't think we bought anything else but this. The prices were a bit high, and if you're frugal, you have to wait. So this little piece came up, and we didn't know its value, but we had, of course, we had our books with us. And so Eunice put Rosalind Campo, Rosalind Campo, she found it. She said, I found the Rosalind Campo, and it's costly. And I said, well, we'll just have to wait and see how things go. So the bidding started, and it started, and it, I thought, well, I can bid on this, because we looked up the price of the Rosalind Campo. And the big Campo, was quite expensive, and I thought, we can afford this. I really want this nice compo. Little did we realize we had priced the large compo, and this is the small compo. We bought it for the price of the large compo. And I, I usually don't tell people what we pay for things, but we paid $700 for this compo because that was the price of the big compo, and we thought this was the big one. That's our story. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Um, <laughs> sometimes size matters. Um, <laughs> did I really say that? <laughs> How many people thought that was true? <laughs> How many people think it was false? Oh, Carl. True story. True story. He fooled you. He fooled you. All right. <laughs> okay, Next Dick Thorne. Richard. Okay, I, I offered to fill in the four pieces, and I said, okay, pick them all. So there are going to be four short couple tales. So I'm going to start with one a little over uh, 30 years ago, and I have got two here. Okay. And they're both right here. But some 30 years ago, we did in Seattle, and Barbara was running an antique shop, so we, we spent a lot of time in auctions. And there's a big auction house in downtown Seattle, primarily it deals with European furniture, but it does have some local uh, smalls. And they advertised carpet glass, so we went downtown Seattle, which we would really like to do. And uh, there's a lot of people out there after four pieces, in. and that there was this bowl, and there were actually two of these, and then there was a fourth piece that was not contemporary carnival. I don't even know what it is now. Well, we didn't recognize the patterns, but we decided, well, who do we have to bid on? So we invested $40 in the four pieces. And then we tried to, try to find out what they were. And I took them to several conventions. I actually took them to the Fenton Convention, and Frank looked at it and said, you're European. So Frank saying, I knew that. <laughs> According to uh, Dave Doty's website, we took it to ICGA in 1999, and sort of Dave Doty, and he photographed it, and then he later named it the Thorn Base. And uh, I also showed it to Glenn Tesselwood. It took Glenn 13 years of research to actually track it down to the wealth of Saxon glass. Uh, catalog where was named Lutic. Well, nobody still calls it the Thorn Base, but he does this the, uh, the later documentation. We also showed Glenn the bowl, and he identified it as Fleur de Lis, which we, we knew it was in Fleur de Lis, 
but you said, I've never seen this side shape. And uh, so, in some of the years, I know that Gail and Kathy had a lot of the fertility in their arms. Mostly you see it in bases and chocolate. And they had a large number of different shapes. At this point, I've never seen this. So far as I know, it's still the only example of a master bowl in fertility. So our $40 got two examples of a vase that were related to name for us, plus but still maybe the only master bowl in fertility. So I think that was a pretty good question. Okay. Now Dick. Richard also has another one after this, his, but let's his two or three. But let's let's take a, a vote on this one. How many people think that story is true? <laughs> False. Do you want to tell them? It's true. It's true. All right. Good. Good. All right. And I apo I apologize for the fly that's flying around here, yeah. Richard. It's just. I love this story. Okay. Well, you know we live in a relatively rural area. So every, every place we go to is a long way. Our Pacific Northwest Club is a seven hour drive for our meetings. <laughs> so we uh, make it more interesting by stopping a lot of antique falls. So this last summer, we, were, we went to attend the open house of one of our Pacific Northwest Carnival Glass members, Allie Dennis, who lives in, Ka in Kennewick. Washington, which is a mere six hours away. <laughs> so we planned a few stops. And one of them was a little antique, a little uh, town of Cashmere, Washington, a real small town, but it had two antique malls. And one of the antique malls had a booth from one of our Pacific Northwest members. So to walk in the door, I went right straight to that booth, and I'm sitting there, you know, all kind of nice carnal glass. There was a beautiful purple constellation comp what I was looking at. And since I was hogging the booth, <laughs> Barbara was wandering around other places, so I get this tap on my shoulder and she says, look what I found for $14. <laughs> uh, nice little kitten's teacup. I'm like, okay, that's nice. Set it down and I'll take it up to the booth after I make my choice here. So a later I stepped back and I felt something under my foot. And I looked down, I stepped on teacup and scorched it. No. <laughs> 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 I said it turned out to be. So I said, well, if I damage it, I guess I'll have to buy it. So I spent $14 on what turns out to be a one and only Swarsh teacup. Swarsh teacup. True or false? Okay, true. <laughs> false? Woohoo! Oh, that's unanimous. That's a <laughs> good, good job. I, it was true. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was false. Okay. So the next one goes back uh, 70 years. It's a rifle uh, auction. I get the brochures from Mickey. And uh, I looked at it, and one of the things I saw was a, a dragon, a Dorothy Taylor Encore Dragon Mini face. Now, it probably is no surprise to you that I collect dragons. <laughs> Maybe it's probably that I also collect mini baskets. And so I looked at the brochure, and it was, there were about four mini baskets in it. So I thought, okay, well, I'll really look into this. So since I'm going to send in some email bids, I started looking to see what else was there. And I, I found a little circle scroll hat I like, found the six petals, uh, beautiful purple, uh, uh, it's that type that. You know, you know, the Duke and Purple is really nice iridescent, so I marked that one down. There were a couple others I looked at. And then, having done that, I started doing some research. I decided, well, I'll spend $65 dollars bid on the uh, six barrels, and then I went to look for the white bells and beads. There wasn't any information on it. So I thought, well, this is unusual, so I guess a lot of it. So I put in the average bid of $375 and a few other bids that I got. So. I didn't get the circle scroll, I didn't get the six panels, but I did get this one for $275. And I got a couple other mini baskets. So I was quite happy. I was quite happy with this one. And then later I looked at uh, the Angel's website and they had this, a picture of this as the first ever document white opal belt and mm -hmm. beads. I know it's unusual, but it's nice to know it's the only one. 
So I tended to uh, hold it when they did the white display. The later, and Gary Lifford was giving that talk, and Gary's talking about why he comes to this one. He says, I was there, I was a runner up on this one. <laughs> he knew it was unusual, but of course, you know, Gary was looking for a bargain, I was looking for an unusual one in my collection. So, uh, the sort of close that gap then, I went to, I think it was ICGA later on, and, it, and Gary's room, there's an absolutely gorgeous six petals purple. So I bought it. <laughs> Probably the same one, and I paid a lot. It wasn't sixty-five dollars for the So I did get this one. Okay, true, yeah. false. Oh, you guys are good. Yeah, they were very good. Very good. Okay. Good job. One, one more. Okay, this one goes back a long, long ways. When we started collecting, that was 50 years ago, I think, something like that, we had pretty diverse interests and didn't include carnal glass, but it was one of the major interests was Fenton, and we belonged to the Pacific Northwest Fenton Club. And then our interests started to narrow. We got introduced by Chris Reynolds to Dragon Lotus and fell in love with that. And then the, our, our Fenton Club members realized that this was one thing that we uh, we enjoyed collecting. So I got a call one day from a fellow Pacific Northwest Fenton Club member. He'd been to a small town of Canyonville in Oregon, and the dealer there had just acquired a state that had a non-iridized red rag motor. So I'd never heard of such a thing. I was quite excited about that. So I called him and arranged to buy it at a price yet to be determined. And we were going down to a Fen our Fenton convention in Eugene, so Canningville is just a few miles south, Jane and uh, Eugene and Medford. So we arranged to go down and buy it. Well, in the meantime, who should appear at this, you know, Canningville is a very small town in Interstate 5, 2,000 people. Who should appear at it but Don Moore? <laughs> and I don't know whether Don Moore was interested in it, but he set the price at $300. So we went down later at during the convention and picked up this piece of three hundred dollars as price by Don Moore. I understand there are one or two more of these that have appeared, but this was the first and still a very unique, non-iridized, and beautiful cherry red dragon motor shrub bowl. Okay. Thank you, Richard. And how many people think true? False? Are they still good? They're still very good. They're still very good. Thank you, Richard. It was for your time. <laughs> okay, let's moving right along here. Okay. Good job. Mr. Bob. Bob and Mr. Bob. Sherry. Bob Bob is gonna take the microphone here, I believe. Well the story that I'm gonna tell you concerning this uh, green homestead chop plate goes back a number of years and you'll probably all realize it when you understand that it starts, our journey started in Lexington, Kentucky with the ACGA convention, one of the last ones that was held there. So we had a good convention. We packed as much glass as we could in the car. We survived the heat. Yeah. <laughs> we had the dog sitting on top of everything and we're heading home. And we get outside of Louisville and we're heading up to Indy. And sure as a devil, right by the Memphis, Indiana exit, is a handwritten sign, antique mall. So I looked there and I said, well, we got a long ways to go. Let's just go see what this is. So we pulled off, had to take a couple of turns going to where the uh, antique mall was. It turned out that it was in an old motel on a 10-room motel that had been turned into an antique mall. So I told her, I said, well, you take rooms one to five, and I'll take rooms six to ten, and we'll meet up afterwards and see what we found. So she's going through hers, and I'm going through mine, and I get to room, I think it was seven. And I get in there, and besides all the wasps that are flying around in there, there are, believe it or not, two chop plates 
this one and one that I've never seen before, an aqua opal homestead chocolate. I've never seen that. So I flipped it over and I'm looking for any IGs on the back. I'm looking to see if it's a Chinese repo. I'm looking for anything. I can't tell if there's anything unusual about it. I didn't know whose it was. I didn't know who made it. But they were both for sale and we could only afford one of them. I elected to take this one mainly because I knew what it was and there was no doubt about it. The other one, boy, it was interesting. I wanted to go back there and take a look again. Anyway, probably a year later, I gave a call to the phone number that I had gotten from the fellow that owned the antique mall. But of course, it was out of business, no longer there. So that's my story. That's your story. Thank you. Good job. And what do you say? True? Ooh. <laughs> False? Fitty fitty. Fitty fitty. <laughs> there, no There's no in the middle. So. There's no such thing as a half. I'm telling you half the truth, half the light. No, it's either it's the truth, truth or, or the no. false. So it's a false. It's a false. It is, but what part of it is false? I know. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the tricky part. Okay, guys, you can yeah, discuss that later. Which one's you half, half and half? You want to tell them which is true? You're all going to say. That's false. That's the false one. That's false. The piece true is false. was the ale. Really? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. That's, That's really interesting. That's Great. What I think it'd be Good possible. job, folks. All right. Now we got okay. Mr. Gary. Stephen Gary. Mr. Gary. Morning. So when I still had a job, I used to go in and I would be one of the first people at work and I would go get my morning cup of coffee and I'd hop on eBay for a few minutes. So I hop on eBay. I'm the only one in the office at this point, and I scroll through eBay, and I find on eBay a bowl and three cups in green. So Steve and I don't collect Millersburg, or hadn't at that point, so I'm like, well, I think I know what this is. But So I jump over to Hooked or onto Doty's, and I look up multi fruit and flowers, and I say, that's it. So I hop back to eBay, and I hit the buy it now price of $130. <laughs> so I purchased the bowl at the top and three cups for $130. About a week later, I drive into my driveway and sitting by the side door is a box. And I said, well, that can't be it. Um, and I'm not expecting anything else. But the box was too small. I said, that can't be it. So I bring the box in the house and I open the top and I open it up and sure enough, it's it. The bowl is unwrapped. Each side of the bowl touches the side of the box. And inside the bowl were three punch cups, and, but those are wrapped. I said, it can't be, it has to be broken. So I take the cups out, I take the bowl out. The bowl is in perfect condition. So about a month later, on one of Jim Rhoda's online auction, I find a green multi-fruit flowers base. So I buy that. About a couple weeks later on eBay, I find two green multi-fruit and flower punch cups. I buy those. I think I was in, we were in Hagerstown and at the Mid-Atlantic Convention, and in a room was one green multi-fruit and flowers punch cup. I buy that. So in a matter of two months, I put this set together, and I have about $300 into it. So it was one of our first pieces of Millersburg that we ever owned, and that's my story. Story, good job, good, good job. Good. Thank you. Gary. Okay. Gary. <laughs> the, the, we're, we're giving the, the presenters up here a, uh, an official Dr. Glass coffee mug, so uh, that's their prize for coming up and, and uh, getting scared in front of everybody. So, okay, thank you, Gary. True or false? Oh, oh, yeah, true, true. False. Completely true. Completely um, true, good job. I think they're, they're, they're hitting about 800 today, aren't they? They're doing pretty yeah, good. Okay, next we got Okay, Billy. Billy and Sandra. 
Okay. There you go, Billy. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to talk about this um, bike that you said. Uh, my wife and I were on the way to see uh, a lady that I call Big Charlie, which is just kind of poor fiction like myself. Uh, <laughs> she lived in Princeton, Kentucky, and we had to go for a hot day yesterday. And uh, I, didn't, I wasn't good with the numbers of the road, so I got on the wrong road, laid it up down, and uh, a couple hundred yards, I realized I was on the wrong road. So I was looking for a place to turn around, and I pulled into this house. And uh, it had antiques stores. This is antiques. And uh, I had to look, and uh, there's a plant pole that's associated with the story. And uh, anyway, it was sitting in the window. So I told Sam, run, 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 say about this bottle. So when I walked up to the table, this plate was sitting on the table. And I asked the lady, I said, uh, how much is uh, this, this piece of glass here, you know? And she said, $60. And I know it's worth 100 because it has any other money back on it. So anyway, I said, I think I'll take it. You know, I was just taking back, but I didn't think to have it. So I said, there's another piece I want to check on. So the plant bottle was uh, $55. So I bought a piece of it. And uh, when we got ready to leave, a friend of mine worked for a place called General Stay on the ESPI CDA member. But uh, anyway, he was uh, one of my friends and uh, probably my closest rival nearby. And uh, the next time I talked to him, I said, Do you ever stop in Sissy's Antiques? And he said, No, no I don't bet he never has anything. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I didn't want to tell him any different, you know. Like, you know like. Well, anyway, I got another part of the story I want to tell. Uh, I was getting down some glass cleaning in it one time, and I found a couple of pieces in my collection that had tip checks from Andrew, or temperature changes, or one of the summer. And uh, anyway, they weren't there when I bought them. So it kind of freaked me out. I kind of had them off anyway. So, I got started selling my better pieces off because I didn't want to take a chance on losing them. I had an aquaple three fruit plate, I even did, got $4,600 for it. I didn't pay near about that much when I got it. Uh, then uh, I had a couple of clear plates that I saw that were Melbourne Park, and I got good money on them. And I took this one to the ICGA in St. Louis in 2007, it was a great event. Marie McGee, Sayo, Jim, and Sayo. And uh, anyway, Sandra called me, Mr. Marie wants to talk to you about the fight that Marie went. And uh, I went back to the room, well, she offered me $2,000 for it, so I let it go to California. And uh, anyway, when on 2014, it came up for sale in a sick option. And uh, anyway, I left a pretty strong bid on it. And I would have got it cheaper, I think, but Barb, I think, was taking with it. She, she, she brought it up on me. And she, if it, she'd have known it was mine, she would have made me pay more. But I did I did a pretty strong feel on it, so I got it. And um, it's got two little acid spots on it, and it's got a, a dye streak in it that looks like a feather, so I knew it was mine. And uh, that's my story, and I'm thinking of it. Thank you, Billy. Yep. Kenneth, Billy? Billy. Billy. Kenneth no. got something. True or false? Okay. True. False. Looks like it's true. Is it true? It's true. That's true. Boy, they're really, really doing well. Really doing well. All right. Miss Kate. Got that one. Whoop. Yeah, we did. So I'm sorry. There you go. Miss Kate. There you go. All right. Might be good. Yeah. <laughs> or not. It would be a long story. <laughs> Only if you wanted to be. <laughs> Can I? If it gets too long, I'll start. We'll start dancing. Start, start nudging me. Anyway, once upon a time, maybe twice. A long, long time ago, and far, far away. I used to tell my stories to my kids. <laughs> Bill and I went gallivanting one day, and we ran into this decanter. Now, I'd like to see the hands of how many folks have ever seen this before. 
Do you know the name of it? Guess what? We didn't need it. The story, if you want to believe it, is it was owned by a brother, a Benedictine brother, who lived in an abbey at Bennett Lake, Wisconsin. <clears throat> he had an enormous collection of marigold for the most part. However, this is not actually marigold. It's green. It's a type of decoke bone green. So seeing as though we'd never seen it before, we had no idea what it was, we decided to take it home with us. And um, we now took that home. We took home a few pieces for some of you others. We took home crucifix candlesticks for Kenda. We took home a fur cone vase for Mr. Stein. We took home a beautiful Florida Lee piece for Nancy Young from the UK, but we kept this. It's a barn, you tell me. Did you pay for one? <laughs> <laughs> I stuck it in the bra and walked out the door. <laughs> but I, I really would like to know, this this piece is featured on CGS UK. The gentleman, this is a true story, I'm not even gonna waste your time with it. It's about Michael O'Brien, uh, some of you may have known him. I'm sure Jim Seek, if he's here, did sell a few people. In fact, you also have his perfume. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I would love to know. This is called, I don't have my glasses on, and I can never remember, Vining Daisies or great, Floral Swirls. It's supposedly a South American uh, decanter. It did come with six tumblers to boot. But I thought it was such a crazy story. Nobody's going to believe this, but it really did happen. And uh, sadly, uh, Brother O'Brien has passed away, which is how we ended up getting a good portion of his estate. We still have a few pieces. It's interesting. I thought it was such a weird tale. I'd love to share it with you all. And obviously, nobody else has ever seen this thing before. Thank you. Yay. Now, she says it's a true story. True? <laughs> False. Must be true then. Must be okay. true. We're gonna, okay. We're going to move on to wrap this thing up. Okay. We're running out of time here. So what we're going to do, we're going to end this uh, uh, little session of uh, true or false uh, uh, stories with another video that uh, kind of, uh, again, talks about how I may have gotten some glass sometime in the past. So, let's see. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Who's next? Hello, little girl. What's your name? Leah. Have you been a good girl, Leah? Yeah. What would you like for Christmas? Teddy bear. Well, let, you can hope you get that teddy bear if you continue to be a good girl. Thank you. Ho, ho, ho. Who's next? Hello, little boy. What's your name? Nolan. Have you been a good boy, Nolan? Yes. What would you like for Christmas? A baseball mitt. Well, you can expect that baseball mitt if you continue to be a good boy. Thank you. Ho, ho, ho. Who's next? Hello, little boy. What's your name? Bobby. Have you been a good boy, Bobby? What would you like for Christmas? Oh, like a microscope. Well, you can get that microscope if you continue being a good boy. Ho, 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 ho. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? <laughs> ho, 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 ho. Hello, little girl. What's your name? <laughs> My name is Christy Santa. 
Have you been a good girl this year? I have been a very, very good girl. What would you like for Christmas? I would love some carnival glass. Well, you can expect that carnival glass if you keep up being a good girl. Thank you, Santa. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> Hello, little girl. What's your name? I'm Lindsay Santa. Have you been a good girl? I've been a very, very, very good girl, Santa. What would you like for Christmas? I would love to be a carnival glass. Well, if you continue being a very, very, very good girl, you'll get that carnival glass. Thank you, Santa. <laughs> Next on the list, Tessa. Leah, she wanted a teddy bear. Mm -hmm. Santa baby, just slip a sable under the tree for me. Who's next, Tessa? Nolan, he wants a baseball glove. <laughs> Who's next? Bobby, who wants a microscope? Who's next, Tessa? Christy, she wants some carnival glass. Santa baby, I want a yacht and really that's not a lot. Then an angel all year, Santa baby, so hurry down the Who's next? Who's next, Tessa? Lindsay, she also wants some carnival glass. Santa, look at the time. We have to hurry so you can deliver all the presents. You're right, Tessa, let's go. Chimney tonight. Come and trim my Christmas tree with some decorations bought at Tiffany. I really do believe in you. Let's see if you believe in me. Boop, 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 boop. Santa baby forgot to mention one little thing, a ring. I don't mean on the phone, Santa baby, so hurry down the chimney tonight. Like I said, I'm sure you guys have seen it, but it's been several years since you've seen it. so. The, 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 the three kids are our grandchildren, and the one is, like I said, our daughter. And all three of those kids, what, now are in college? Granger's in law school. The Santa's in law school. Uh, the elf get pulled out there. He's a sophomore at U of I, and Tessa of is graduating from U of I. Right, next so, year, yeah, so. they're all grown up. So. Oh. And uh, that's the truth, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed Thank it. You. Thank you guys all for coming. Thank you guys.